चिपेन वाचा मल शरीर वैद्यकोपाकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिरान ई जस्ट थॉट विच जस्ट क्विकली आई टेक फाइव मिनट्स टू जस्ट सी uh what uh, we have covered and how it is split in patanjali yoga sutras okay so this is basically patanjali yoga sutra and we have four padas uh, samadhi pada sadhana pada vibhuti pada and kaivalya pada and i've just briefly pointed out what what we have covered uh, what shrini and uh, jay shree have covered in uh, samadhi pada chitta vrittis and tools to overcome vrittis and ishvara pranidhana and types of samadhi and also some instruments and chitta vikshepas and tools to remove those chitta vikshepas so basically this is what we have covered in samadhi pada and in sadhana pada what yesterday uh, devsena covered is like the kleshas and the kriya yoga and uh, drushta and drushya and uh, viveka kyati and ashtanga yoga in that only bahiranga yoga right uh, so today what we are going to do is the uh, vibhuti pada okay so uh, basically what we are going to continue the uh, the second part the antaranga yoga of the ashtanga yoga and then we are going to do samyama and then parinamas and then siddhis through samyama on different objects and things like that and also ashta siddhis so this is what is covered in vibhuti pada and uh, uh, the next will be so this is how it just gets split but now i have done another mind map okay Uh, this is basically uh, it is a kind of uh, uh, not according to the chapter but according to the uh, concepts what i thought uh, you know to uh, visualize uh, what is covered in the entire patanjali yoga sutra like how i have done it is uh, you have patanjali yoga sutra see there is something uh, we have a mind because everything all that what we are seeing is in the mind that is happening right and then we have some sadhanas to work on that mind to make that you know uh, in a, into a right state and then we have samadhis okay and then we have in that process we are uh, getting some siddhis so that is what is the vibhuti and then of course the kaivalya so that's how i've split it so when it comes to mind across all the padas we can see starting from samskara and we have chitta vrittis and we have kleshas and we have chitta vikshepas these are all the things that we are actually going to work on like you know in uh, uh, one uh, the chitta vrittis and uh, this uh, chitta vikshepas we are going to see it in samadhi pada and uh, kleshas we are going to see it in uh, um, sadhana pada like that so basically whatever all these are the things that uh, uh, the mind is going through and which we want to kind of overcome through our sadhana so what will be our i am not going to go in detail because all this is covered whatever those uh, terminologies that are be news that is what i have put it here okay and uh, the next is the sadhana uh, so what all kinds of sadhana that will be done to overcome all this uh, uh, the impurities or the obstacles and things like that so we have abhyasa vairagya viveka kyati and then chitta vikshepas to remove them and we have kriya yoga so all these are basically sadhanas in different different ways right so ashtanga yoga and uh, even this panchashila and ishvara pranidhana so these all comes under sadhana pada i mean sadhana it's not pada it's a sadhana in the true meaning i meant okay and then we have samadhi uh, okay we have samadhi uh, so in that we have all the types of samadhis and stages of samadhi like that okay all the samadhi things comes under here and then we have the siddhis that Uh, uh, in this process we are uh, having some siddhis so that those siddhis are gets uh, covered here and then we have the kaivalya deliberation so this gives the complete uh, thing of what all we have uh, you know what all is covered in the patanjali yoga sutras okay so this anyway i will share it okay so uh, now uh, we will begin with vibhuti pada uh, i guess uh, now um, 
विभूति पादा बिगिन्स आफ्टर यू विद्रॉ फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड आउटसाइड आफ्टर यू विद्रॉ फ्रॉम योर ओन बॉडी एंड सेंसेस एंड टर्न इन वर्ड्स सो आई गेस यू आर ऑल रेडी टू नाउ गेट इनटू द विभूति पादा ओके सो एंड द फर्स्ट इन द विभूति पादा वी हैव द एज आई सेड अष्टांग योगा सेकंड पार्ट दैट इज अंतरंग योगा ओके इन दैट वी हैव धारणा ध्याना एंड समाधि ओके so the very first uh, uh, see what i'm going to do is in vibhuti pada i am not uh, t- uh, like you know uh, going through all the sutras i'm just going through whatever the topics that i showed you uh, the sutras that are related to that because otherwise it becomes too overwhelming for people for when we are uh, you know kind of towards the end of the um, exam because also because in vibhuti pada we, we don't we are not covering the entire uh, content as such so i will be just covering uh, these uh, antaranga sadhana uh, sutras and the samyama sutras and uh, the parinama sutras and of course uh, the ashta siddhis one okay so we will be just going through covering the, those topics only okay so uh, the first sutra is desha bandha desha bandha chittasya dharana okay so this is uh, 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 dharana so we know we have already done this in yic and first semester and even this semester so dharana is nothing but fixing the mind on a particular space or area uh, basically a point within an area say and the area may be a, a form of thought in your mind or it may be an object outside or it may be a sound like a mantra right hmm. so uh, the uh, in the in the meditation practice it is not that uh, the focusing is uh, so important it is fixing the mind in that area so the as i said the area may be a thought in your mind or it may be a, a object outside or it may be a sound like a mantra okay so uh, it, it can be even a karma like you know the breathing itself okay so basically uh, so once you do that and uh, you are uh, that's you are in that like you know so basically you are still in the outside i mean some disturbances will be there so you are trying to focus on your uh, particular object that is in the first stage and um, then the second one is the uh, dhyana so sorry yeah tatra pratyaya ekatanata dhyanam so here when the object appears to flow towards you without your effort it is dhyanam so basically what you're going to do is you have a single thought or object or whatever is said right so you need to stretch that thought uh, from your sensory organs and right up to your mind and beyond the mind into the self that is dhyana okay so here what is important is turning inwards it it's uh, uh, not the object basically okay so initially you fix your mind through the senses onto the object outside and then let the object be there in your vision and shift your attention uh, inwards onto the self okay so, uh, so the idea is that you have to turn inwards this is a very critical step in dhyana um okay so in the whole journey it's going to be from like doing to being state okay so when you turn inwards uh, you see how slowly and uh, steadily the last thing that you conquer is the doing aspect of the at the mind level and the intellectual and emotional levels and at that level you actually give up that doing uh, part and uh, so that giving up the doing is what is called as Uh, dhyana okay and then the third uh, state is uh, samadhi so that tadevartha matra nirbhasam swarupa shunyam eva samadhi so here the samadhana uh, is samadhi its samadhi is derived from the word samadhana which is a settled state of mind is when the flow of the object alone is there and the seer has completely dissolved so you are completely absorbed into the object okay so samadhi also it, it comes from uh, the word like you know the sama plus di uh, so where uh, sama means uh, tranquil and balanced and di means uh, it includes manas buddhi ahankara 
and all of that. So samadhi is a tranquil, uh, peaceful state uh, uh, which, in which there is uh, no effort involved and that state is uh, what is called as uh, swarupa shunyam. Okay? And uh, basically both the I who is the doer and the process of doing is completely dissolved. Okay. And uh, this, this sutra is very important because uh, this is what is connected with uh, the first pada, the second, third and uh, fourth sutras. Uh, we had that yoga um, chitta vritti nirodaha. Yoga removes the chitta vritti and then restrains. And uh, tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam. Uh, then the sadhaka is established in himself. Uh, and uh, vritti sarupya itaratra. So, else the vritti is take you away from the self and identifies you with uh, uh, the external world. So, this is what is connected with that, those three sutras. Okay. And uh, here, uh, basically, dharana and uh, dhyana uh, merges into samadhi and the ego is completely dissolved. Okay. So, you have the, basically the mind can easily uh, go into, you know, like multiple thoughts. Um, that's that's what our mind is, the chanchalata mind. Uh, but uh, you have the ability to bring it back to dharana because, and then slowly withdraw the effort to move to dhyana and then um, that's the silence of samadhi. So it's basically a constant process of going into uh, you know, dharana, dhyana and samadhi. It's not like, you know, okay, you reach the dharana state, now next state will be dhyana and then samadhi and then finally, it's not like that. So you keep uh, going through this cycle, uh, maybe for a couple of months for some people, couple of years for some people. So it is kind of a couple of minutes maybe for some people. So this kind of constantly, the mind keeps going into these uh, three states uh, thing. So when all the three, uh, dhyana, dharana and uh, samadhi, okay, they're all together. Now that is called as the Samyama state. So which means like, you know, we are going into Dhyana, uh, I mean, we are going to Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. So this keeps on happening. So when they're all there together, that is what is called as Samyama. So uh, the Sutra is the fifth Sutra. Tajayat Pragnal, I mean, Trayame Katra Samyamaha. Okay, that is what uh, it says. And it also has, we have two more, two or three more sutras about this Samyama. So it says, Tajayat Pragnalokaha. Tajayat, the, basically the moment we hold on to Samyama, Pragnaloka happens. Okay. This means you are seeing the uh, subtle form of the object. Because now we have moved into the, uh, you know, the Pragnaloka. Uh, and Tasya uh, Bhumishu Vini Yogaha. So now use this Samyama state, which is the base. This is what takes you forward. So this is a very uh, significant uh, state in uh, the meditation. And Tadapi Bahirangam Nirbijasya. So what it says is basically, so for this state, when you are in that state, I mean, for a state in the Nirbija, this is a Bahiranga. You know, the way now we are saying uh, uh, Bahiranga uh, uh, yoga is like, a, you know, the... Uh, outside state, but outside world. And similarly, for a person in the Nirbija Samadhi, they, even this Samyama is like a Bahiranga. That's what it means, basically. So that state is also outside for a person who reaches Nirbija Samadhi. So this is where now we have all the, you know, um, uh, mm, Sabija Samadhi to Nirbija, all that Samadhi is what we are seeing. All this happens uh, uh, here, right? Uh, so there are many states of samadhi like uh, we start from the uh, where we start like you know the very first state what we started is like a very quiet state where we uh, not getting disturbed but any external disturbance is there okay we get disturbed so from there to some pragnata samadhi which we have seen already what is all that where uh, you know kind of we go inwards and then asam pragnata samadhi and then we go into the uh, nirbhis samadhi so there, i just would like to show uh, through this like, you know, this is the uh, the chanchalata, the mind with the very way we are in the ma manifest, the vector uh, thing. And then we go into dharana and then dhyana and then samadhi. 
so beyond this is the swarupa unmanifest form uh, so when we are in this uh, dharana dhyana samadhi together is what is called as samyama which is just shown in this uh, blue arrow mark okay uh, so and uh, so once basically we transcend all the subtle forms and the causal forms that is the needless state of being and that uh, there are many states of uh, samadhi right uh, so all that and so now what happens is when we are going through this uh, the mind undergoes transformations so these transformations uh, are called as uh, parinamas okay uh, so parinamas are not the states as such but they are the uh, transformations or the changes that what happens in the mind so there are three parinamas uh, what happens that is uh, nirodha parinama and uh, samadhi parinama and ekagrata parinama okay so uh, in uh, see when uh, the outside whatever the disturbances that we are getting the influences we have outside the objective world the from the outside object world is called as uh, there is a term that is vyuthana okay let me just read this uh, uh, shloka sutra vyuthana vyuthana nirodha samskara yora bibhava prada pradurbhavau nirodakshana chitta anvayo nirodha parinamaha so it is talking about what is nirodha parinama so it introduces the term vyuthana and it says an influence of the objective world is vyuthana now uh, uh, nirodha samskara is when you transcend that objective world outside but once you transcend it uh, you are no longer getting disturbed from the outside world but then now you are getting influenced by the impressions that is there in your uh, samskara so that is the next level that you are getting in right now you have moved into that thing so now when you become aware of the samskaras and once you transcend that that is the nirodha parinama so that is the transformation that has to happen in the mind and that particular transformation is what we call as nirodha parinama so the nirodha parinama is the transition the transformation of the mind from uh, the uh, the impressions the, i mean the mind which is getting influenced from the impressions um, that are there in your samskaras to uh and basically you're transcending that impressions that is the nirodha parinama so it's a transformation so it is not a state okay so and then we have another transformation which is called as uh, samadhi parinama sarvartha sarvartha taika gratayoh shayodayau chittasya samadhi parinama so this is what is samadhi parinama so in samadhi parinama what happens is the inner transformation is uh there is a, a gradual receding of these distractions resulting um, distraction resulting in the simultaneous rising of the single pointedness so that is another transformation so that transformation is what we call as samadhi parinama samadhi uh, parinama okay so when uh, these uh, rising and uh, falling uh, thought processes are in balance Uh, the one pointed consciousness emerges and uh, maintenance of awareness with keen intensity from one pointed attention to uh, no pointed attentiveness is what is called as ekagrata parinama so that is another transformation so which is at a different level so when now uh, these rising and the falling thought processes right which are come to a balanced state and then your uh, Uh, consciousness one pointed consciousness emerges and then that point when you transcend that from one pointed uh, concentration to uh, kind of no pointed uh, uh, concentration that is what is called as ekagrata parinama okay so basically these are the three parinamas which are there and uh, then when you do samyama uh, uh, on certain um, objects that is when you will see get some siddhis okay because as, as i said samyama is not like you know one thing so you uh, uh, have a object a particular object you either you do samyama on your senses or on the sun or on the moon so so many things are there which uh, shilpa is going to talk about 
so that that means what basically your dharana dhyana and uh, 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 samadhi th- those states you will go through and then on a continuous abhyasa you will uh, settle down and then go you will be able to go into the deeper state of uh, samadhi okay so now i will uh, just uh, stop this uh, sharing and uh, shilpa will uh, take you through the next uh, namaste everyone so geeta has explained us about uh, dharana dhyana and samadhi and dharana dhyana samadhi when uh, we attain this state uh, it's sam- samyama so as uh, it is there in the yoga sutras that samyama on different object or on different rupas give us different kind of siddhis there are the ashta siddhis are given specifically but when we are focusing or when we are uh, contemplating on certain things uh, we attain that siddhi and there are many siddhis there are around uh, 16 to 18 siddhis given in the yoga sutras in the book uh, but in our slm or slm we have selected ones uh, but the main which are important uh, we have jotted down it over here so if we are going to contemplate on samskara one can obtain knowledge of past life then pratyaya on object in fo- front of us the object which is in front of us if we uh, focus on that or if we contemplate on that you can read a person's mind by just looking at him on strength if we contemplate on strength achieving strength physical strength then we will attain strength like an elephant if we contemplate on the inner light knowledge of what is subtle and which is hidden and far we can achieve that knowledge if we contemplate on the sun knowledge of the whole universe will be attained on the moon knowledge of far and distant regions like galaxies if we contemplate on the star knowledge of our planetary movements we get it now your starts the chakra now if we are going to content contemplate on the navel center so knowledge of physical aspects of our existence from beginning we are going to get on the throat or the kantha chakra knowledge about the higher selves and gain control of lower urges if we are going to contemplate on the kurma nadi we obtain steadiness if we are going to contemplate on the purusha the universal it this leads to ultimate knowledge of purusha geeta can you just uh, move this slide purusha gnana so there are different kinds of uh, objects on which we can contemplate and we can attain these powers or we can attain these siddhis now if we are going to contemplate on the udana prana that is the upward moving force in our body nothing can hold you down there is no solidity that holds you one can leave it that is rise higher so we must have seen or we must have heard that uh, when the uh, rishis they are uh, meditating they rise up from the ground level so that is this one can walk over water if there is some pricking pricking of thorn or something that we are not going to feel the pain of it um i um um like pul raguram ji uh, always explains us one thing uh, which is from sant gnaneshwar's uh, teachings or fr- uh, from his life so that is one ki uh, changadev was one guru and he wanted to meet gnaneshwar he wanted to visit gnaneshwar's place and he had his own um, tiger and he came on the tiger and gnaneshwar uh, maharaj and his uh, brothers and sister they were sitting on a wall so gnaneshwar maharaj moved the wall and he went to meet tangdev so these things we have heard uh, in our all uh, stories and everything whatever there are many like uh, in the north in madhya pradesh and mp uh, everywhere there are many uh, rishis uh, who have attained this siddhis and there are uh, stories or there are uh, um, uh, like um, written knowledge about all these siddhis which they have attained so we can um, contemplate on the uh, objects for meditation uh, and after the um, like they are going to gain this power this is this 
Now in our SLM, there are Ashta Siddhis which are given. Can you just go down? Ha. So these are the Ashta Siddhis uh, which are there, which we, uh, which we are going to learn in our SLM. So these are Tato Animadi, Anima ma, Madi Pradur Bhavaha, Kaya Sampata. Sampat Dharman Bigatascha. One becomes master of his body and has the ability to resist the play and control of all elements. In him arises all eight powers, such as reducing himself to size of an atom, that is Animadi. So these are the different Siddhis in which we can uh, uh, work on the body. And uh, we have seen these examples also, like we have uh, Hanumana. Uh, who could uh, just become very small and become very large. He can hold the whole Parvats for the Sanjeevani in his hand, who can make his tail bigger and bigger when he lit the Lanka, set the Lanka on fire. So these are the Siddhis which the Rishis uh, have attained by contemplating uh, and by uh, doing Sayyama. Samyamya. Okay, so Patanjali talks about the eight types of power or siddhis, and these eight siddhis are as follow: Anima, the yogi can make his body small like an atom, sukshma. Laghima, the body can be made light, lightedness is there. Mahima, the body can be made large, as we saw Hanumana. And we have seen uh, like uh, whenever uh, when we were kids and we have seen Ramayana, we used to see um, a large body, small body. Then they used to sh show the demons becoming bigger and bigger, smaller Then the arrows we used to see. So all these things like when we were kids, we have seen them at least in the shows. Mahima making the body large. Garima, the body is made so heavy that one can't lift it. Prapti. Capacity to reach anywhere. So wherever you want to be there, wherever there is need, you can go there. That is the capacity to reach anywhere. Prakyama, unobstructed fulfillment of desire. So whatever desires are there, so those desires are fulfilled. There is, there is no obstruction in that. Vashitva, control over all objects, organic or you. Like whatever objects are there, you can control those objects sitting in your own self. Ishitva, capacity to create and destroy things. Create, that is good kind of creation and destroy it, so wherever it is required. So these eight these appear as a result of complete mastery over life or Mahabhutas, all the Mahabhutas. So um, like for contemplation, we have all the uh, five elements also, we can contemplate on five elements. So with this contemplation on different things, it is uh, uh, written in the sutras that one can have a bright radiance. So the aura, there's an example which is given in Raghu Ramji's book, like how the aura was and how in the presence of that uh, person or that guru, you feel very peaceful. Uh, there's an example given that there were many dogs who were sitting around the lady who was focusing and who had this part uh, and the dogs would sit peacefully without any uh, um, barking or anything. So these, uh, these are the power of Siddhi. So there's one sutra which says beauty, rupa, lavanya, like all beauty and sundarta, everything is there by contemplation on this Siddhis. So this is the power of the Siddhis. So till now we have uh, studied that how we can come step by step by controlling our mind, by uh, uh, getting over our desires and then focusing, that is uh, dharana, dhyana and samadhi. And then samyama on all these different objects can attain you to get samadhi and these ashta siddhis, the powers which are uh, mentioned here in our book or in the Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Okay. After that, Gita. So these are the uh, Siddhis which come under the chapter Vibhuti Pada. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Kaivalya Pada is the fourth chapter of Patanjali Yoga Sutras. So towards the ending of uh, Vibhuti Pada itself, towards the ending of Vibhuti Pada itself, as sir was telling uh, 3.51, uh, 
by being non attached to even these siddhis the seeds of bondage are destroyed only then kaivalyam liberation can be attained so kaivalyam is mentioned starts to get mentioned in the end of the vibhuti pada itself and also in 3.56 in um, the last sutra of vibhuti pada it is given that one when is when um, that one can reach kaivalyam when one is free from the limitations of birth quality and position i mean the the i mean to say that the kaivalyam starts there itself the mention of kaivalyam so i'll just start with um, yeah so the fourth chapter kaivalya pada is a chapter on final liberation so what is kaivalyam kaivalyam is the ultimate goal in uh, yoga it is not a state of samadhi samadhis are going to finish now and kaivalya is going to be explained here so kaivalya means isolation or detachment isolation uh, comes from the word kevala in sanskrit from that kaivalya has come so it means alone isolation so what are we isolating here purusha is separated from prakriti so we have to reach that final state uh, in the third sutra it was third sutra of the first chapter tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam so that goal of swarupa is being brought here in kaivalyam it will be shown so i'm just i've just put the other padas what was um, so in kaivalya pada things that were explained in samadhi pada sadhana pada and vibhuti pada all are taken but no new tools are explained in kaivalya pada everything is brought together and explain how kaivalya is going to be achieved so in samadhi pada it ended with nirbija samadhi <clears throat> so from that it is going to continue in kaivalya pada in sadhana pada we saw the viveka khyati that concept of viveka khyati is going to be taken into kaivalya pada now and in vibhuti pada we saw the siddhis just now they were explained uh, and that is also going to start uh, come in the beginning part so this i have just given here in the end nirbija samadhi leads to dharma mega samadhi leads to kaivalyam this is the flow so um, i am only covering what is given in our study learning material and for our exam portion <laughs> because there is lot more about the mind but um, i am not covering all that only what we have learned uh, so these are the topics i'll start off so the first sutra in the fourth chapter tells about the five ways siddhis can be obtained of which only one was explained in vibhuti pada the the sutra is janma aushadi mantra tapah samadhi cha siddhayah of which samadhi was explained in the form of samyama in vibhuti pada the other four types are by birth by having herbs or drugs mantra tapah these are also ways to attain these are also ways to attain to attain samad um, siddhis so what what are the siddhis they are uh, as i mentioned on the right side they are expressions of spiritual progress so let us know that we have reached some stage in our progress and awakening of the dormant potential within us but one by one as these siddhis are encountered we explore them we have to transcend them we have to go beyond them not get attached to those siddhis they are distractions for the yogi in the path to kaivalya they have to be set aside by non attachment just as how a lotus remains unattached by water even though it stays entirely in water right from the moment it it is it comes out like that the yogi should be unattached untouched by the siddhis that he encounters he or she encounters um <clears throat> the 13th sutra tells about gunas so it says that everything around you is made up of gunas whatever you see around you whether it is gross subtle subtlest everything even the thoughts in the mind the mental impressions are also made of gunas the three gunas like how the three primary colors make up all other colors that you see around you these three gunas make up everything else around you now the mind is what helps us to uh, to follow those disciplines given in sadhana pada given in uh, vibhuti what everything that we have done is through our mind using our mind but the mind itself is an object of observation the consciousness is a witness of the mind in the end the mind itself has to be set apart by non attachment the example of uh, uh, that was given yesterday um, of of having a crocodile in a pond to remove the impurities and the fish but in the end the crocodile itself has to be removed for the water to be safe or clear another example that sir gave us was to remove a virus in a in a in a pc we use the antivirus software but after we have removed the virus we have to remove the antivirus software as well so in like that we have to now detach ourselves from the mind as well which was useful for us all this while um 
the next sutra tells this is 26th one tada viveka nimnam kaivalya pragbharam chittam so here once the the inclination comes towards vivekam towards discrimination that we are discriminating between the mind and the consciousness now slowly we are gravitating towards kaivalyam this discrimination has to start first initially we had discrimination not to be attached to the siddhis now we are discriminating between the mind and the consciousness itself um so uh, in this state one is renouncing the bliss atma prasadam and the knowledge ritambara pragnya uh, that we saw in in, in the first uh, chapter um, samadhi pada towards the end we saw this happening in nirbija samadhi so till here we are still in a state of nirbija samadhi and this is all happening um, in this state vivekam yeah this this i told okay vivekam helps to gravitate towards kaivalya so now the next samadhi comes this is dharma mega samadhi this is the last samadhi state um so here <clears throat> in the yogi is in a state of perfect discrimination and not even distracted by the siddhis vibhudis and can separate the mind from the consciousness so how does a yogi develop this over time in the first chapter we talked about vairagyam and uh, and vivekam in the second chapter over time as it is practiced constantly practiced vairagyam develops into para vairagyam and vivekam develops into viveka khyati by the series of sadhanas that were explained yesterday and now the yogi does not have desire even for liberation even for kaivalyam even for enlightenment this state where the yogi is detached even from uh, his desire for kaivalyam itself is a state of samadhi that brings about dharma mega samadhi here dharma refers to virtues dharma mega samadhi means he is enveloped in a cloud of virtues the yogi and um, so here vivek viveka khyati is brought in this sutra in this chapter <laughs> now in this dharma mega samadhi state what happens tatha klesha karma nivrtihi kleshas and karmas are removed they are completely dissolved in this state kleshas and karmas were discussed again in the previous chapters the inner conflicts and uh, the activities that lead to bondage they're all brought to an end and destroyed by viveka khyati as a result avidya the first klesha the mother of all kleshas is also destroyed when avidya is removed one experiences infinite knowledge Sutra four point three one says, "Tada sarva varana mala petasya jnana sayanantya jnanam alpam jnanam alpam." That is very little to be known. Hardly anything left to be known. All the desire to know and to achieve is extinguished. In the Dharma Mega Samadhi, now in this state, the gunas start. to recede they have fulfilled their purpose what was the purpose of the gunas creating experiences for the purusha and once and to help the purusha to realize one self to realize that he or she is purusha once this realization has begun the gunas purpose has been finished has finished the sequence of changes in guna end that is the word parinama is there in this sutra transition ends and the guna samapatti and the gunas recede the next <clears throat> 33rd sutra says says as the gunas come to an end it happens step by step even though at every moment the change in the gunas was happening it is not noticeable in between sometimes we can notice the change only at the end of the series of changes um as sir gave the example when one practices a uh, sadhana a, a japa or a yama practice the effect is taking place continuously within us but it is perceived only after an end of a certain period of time so like that this end of the gunas is observed once we reach dharma mega samadhi that is the final point of transformation of the three gunas the sutra is 33 This is the last sutra of Kaivalya Pada. <clears throat> Now the gunas have resolved, 
and um, the, the sutra is purushartha shunyanam gunanam prati prasavah kaivalyam swarupa pratishtha va chiti shakti riti the purushartha has been fulfilled by the gunas so now the gunas start to recede which we saw when the gunas start receding the association between prakriti and purusha starts to separate and purusha is now established in its true nature the words swarupa pratishta in the sutra purusha is now in its true nature undisturbed and unbound by the gunas and is liberated from rebirth suffering attains moksha or kaivalya we have come back to our third sutra in the first chapter tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam he is established in his in his uh, in the in the swarupa state so yoga is the inward journey of the individual from the manifested to the unmanifested in sankhya philosophy we saw how purusha and prakriti came together gunas evolved and creation was formed yoga darshana gives us the sadhana and the discipline how to go back to the initial stage of where purusha and prakriti are now separated so those steps were mentioned in kaivalya pada and we are back to purusha now that is the end of this om sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu Ma kashche dukkha bhag bhavet Om shanti shanti shanti